This is our talk feature for Frico Talks the News on Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020. I am Frico with Frico.com. Our talk feature today is the drone wars of Libya and the rise of Turkey. Libya may turn out to be the latest in a string of proxy battlefields for world powers that allow them to test the latest war tech developments literally in their arsenal. While multiple theaters throughout the world have seen the increased uses and significance of drones in battles, the tangled civil war in Libya has become the major concentration of drone warfare in the world, offering drone tacticians a myriad of new field-gathered data to help them develop the next round of drones and drone killers. There you go. There you go. I gave you guys the quick, this is what happened, there. There. So if I meander, you can feel happy. You got the you got the, the the key things in there. Now from last week we had Edge Region, or from the last show last segment yesterday, we had Edge Region as our little text thingy that showed up. Will we continue Edge Region? No, we're gonna take it down. There you go. No more Edge Region. Let's let's stick to this story. Quite a fascinating story that's going on over there in Turkey is. Or over there in or over the skies of Libya, as it's kind of like what Guernica was in World War before World War Two, before the Germans really unleashed fury upon the world. The Germans perfected their craft by bombing the crap out of a city in Spain called Guernica. Pablo Picasso did a famous painting about the bombing of Guernica, killed hundreds of thousands of people, and really taught the Germans all the all the ways in which they should execute their blitzkriegs. So that's kind of what's going on over the skies of Libya. It's always nice when you can test out tools over skies that have nothing to do with your people. You can just kill people that don't belong to you. And that's what you'd prefer, generally speaking. If you're going to test out weapons of death, you, you want to try and test it on people that are not your citizens because they tend to not like that. But they tend to not care so much when you're doing it to other citizens. So this is from Al Jazeera.com, largest drone war in the world. How air power saved Tripoli. While manned fighter aircraft have been used, for the most part, the air war has been fought by unmanned aerial vehicles or drones. With nearly 1,000 airstrikes conducted by UAVs, UN Special Representative to Libya, Ghassan Salame, called the conflict the largest drone war in the world. Well, yeah, it absolutely it's big big time big time show man all kinds of uh, techniques and tactics and whatever's being perfected there the war generals are looking at everything that's going over there right now this is this is where all the great world powers are using meat bags to test their new tools and tactics against one another vicarious through the vicarious well, well basically they're I guess it's I was going to say the word vicarious. I don't know if I want to say the word vicarious to describe what I'm talking about. But essentially, they are using the meat bags of others to test out their toys. And they don't have to use Chinese soldiers. And they don't have to use Turkish soldiers. They can use just just the poors that are in that region. Just sign the poors up to fight the poors in the name of... Well, not in the name of the poors, although they, they think so. But really in the name of whatever entity supplied them with the toys. So the arrival of Chinese-made Wing Loon drones in 2016 made a significant difference to the LNA's military capabilities. First used in the battle for Derna in eastern Libya, the drones had a decisive impact on the outcome as forces loyal to Haftar battled fighters from the Shura Council of Mujahideen in a brutal confrontation for the city. These Chinese-made drones operated by pilots from the United Arab Emirates and flown out of the Al-Qadim Air Base in, in the east have a combat radius of 1,500 kilometers, 932 miles, meaning they can deliver precision-guided missiles and bombs striking anywhere in the country. These drones were used to great effect in the battle for Tripoli, which General Haftar announced in April 2019 against the GNA. Government forces were repeatedly pushed back in a tight pocket as the capital was besieged by the LNA. For all the talk of precision airstrikes, the civilian casualty toll mounted as targets were hit in increasingly built-up urban areas. Well, they were precision targeted. You just 
don't understand. They precision targeted civilians. It's called terrorism. It's what governments do. It's weird to th feel like governments are fighting terrorism when governments exist because of it. If you take away terrorism, who would follow the government? If How many laws would you not follow if you weren't fearful that you might be killed if you don't? In the end, that's what that's ultimately what you fear. You could say, well, I don't want to pay the... You know, I got to pay the taxes, so if I don't pay the taxes, they'll fine me or whatever. No, they'll kill you. That's what it ends with. That's why you pay taxes. Now, some taxes you may want to pay, but all taxes that you pay, would you pay all the taxes? Would you sign up to pay for some of the things that the U.S. government selects your money to be paid for? I don't know. I think a lot of people might stop paying taxes if they could, at least selectively. If they could just pay what they wanted to pay, the government would get a lot less money. But if they get less money, then they send out people, meat machines, meat machines with uh, lethal force to assure. And that's, that's how they operate. So governments are, by their very nature, terroristic in how they keep law and order. It's you will be killed. <laughs> terrorism I, I, I'm, I'm being a little bit ridiculous there but still it's 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 basically the same thing but in the name of fighting terrorism these uh, particular uh, groups with their particular ideological constructs that uh, ideational constructs that allow them to to murder their neighbors for the in the name of whatever pure certain absolutarian moral constructs that they seek to impose upon the rest of the universe by any means necessary yeah they're just they're just being whipped up to frenzies to fight one another in the name of turkey and china and russia and the united states basically testing out their new tours and see toys and seeing what works seeing what tactics work so there were now doubts that the UN recognized GNA led by Prime Minister Fayez al Sarraj could hold out much longer despite support from Italy and Qatar after the Chinese drones arrived, but then the Turkish drones arrived. That all changed in December 2019 when Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan confirmed Turkey would sharply increase its military support for al Sarraj and the GNA. Along with troops, Erdogan sent Turkish-made armed drones, namely the Bayraq, TB2. Smaller and with a much shorter range than the Wing Lung, the Bayraktar was still able to engage and destroy the LNA's ground targets, harass its supply lines, and attack forward air bases that were once considered safe. Pro-government ground troops could now advance with air cover, the enemy's positions known to their commanders. This, combined with the timely arrival of Hawk missiles, among other air defense systems, meant the main GNA airbase at Tripoli's Mitika Airport could now operate without fear of attack. The effect was dramatic as the GNA launched a counteroffensive and in a lightning strike seized the coastal town of Sermon Sabrata and Al Ajalat Al Ajayl I'll, I'll, no, I got it right the first time. Al Ajalat. Along with the border town of Al Asaya. Al-Asa, I put an I in there that's not there. This was followed up by repeated attacks on the Al-Wataya Air Base, which Hafter's forces were using as their main point of operations. The air base was finally retaken on May 18, a severe blow to Hafter's ambitions in western Libya, as not only was it the LNA's principal headquarters there, it was also his supply and logistics hub. LNA units were forced to ret retreat, especially as the Russian-made UAE supplied Panzer S-1 air defense units were being comprehensively destroyed, leaving the retreating forces with little to no protection from air attacks. Media reports claimed sophisticated Turkish jamming gear was responsible for disorienting the Panzer's, Panzer's radar, leaving it vul vulnerable to airstrikes from the Bayraktar drones. While air power can at times turn a tide into military conflict, it has also been used in Libya as a threat level indicator, a diplomatic tool, and a warning of potential escalation if events are left unchecked. So there you have it, folks. This is the new reality that is beginning to emerge. And we're not even here yet. What's going to happen, what, what I, I support, that what will inevitably have to happen is the drones will keep getting smaller and the smaller platforms will still have higher degrees of lethality attached to them. And, 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 and war will turn into a sky show of, of hordes of drones seeking to 
basically clear the area so that one side or the other can have drone control. And there'll be 3D printers on either side cranking out drones as drones are destroyed. Like right there, the battlefield is 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 a whole complete, the only part of the cycle that, maybe in some instances the battlefields actually will have the supplies, the raw materials to build the drones, or at least many of the drones. But on the main, other than the raw materials, the whole production process from, from, from design to implementation could happen right there on the battlefield. Design, build, implement, modify, design, build, implement. I'll be there. I'll be, everybody will be there racing to get the newer the design and, and now with the artificial intelligence you could see a generation you, you have a, a wave of drones that go out and the next wave that goes act, a, after them is the next generation of drones because you figured out stuff you know the the evolutionary contest of design that will occur over the skies with hordes of drones this is my prediction i could be wrong but that's that's kind of what i predict and i see I see that that's that's where things are going. That's the direction. Like the the, the picture that I showed here. This is a big big drone. Uh, drones are are getting smaller and smaller, and and uh, size is not limiting their capacities to do what the big drones could do. And that's where we're heading towards. We're we're just heading towards that. So keep your eye on Libya, where coercive enterprise uh, entities are using the the blood and bones of libyans to test out their toys their 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 terroristic means of controlling the masses on on hapless libyans who are being led to their deaths in the name of allah or whatever the heck else spooks they want to use not that allah is well i believe in christ so i i would deny allah but it, for for my muslim friends i don't mean any disrespect you know, I, I mean that in the in the same sense where I refer to Christ as a spook for people who follow Christ, but I would say not the real Christ. <laughs> My interpretation, they follow the Christ spook, the one that they, they where they use the word of Christ, or for for my Muslim friends, they use the word of Allah, and they you could argue if if you're if you have a version of Islam that you believe is is not is not coercive in nature then you would look at the coercive versions of Islam as not being reflective of the true Allah spirit. That's how I feel about Christians who use the name of Christ to whip people. Because it could very well, but I don't know how many Christians are participating in this Libyan war. I'm sure there are some. I don't know how many major factions there are. I think most of the factions, though, most of their spooks are my particular Allah with my particular hadiths and whatever traditions that that we're going to claim are are the absolute traditions that give us the justification to murder our neighbors and that's what's being lived out in libya and i will end this segment there that's the end of this segment coming up next is the last segment of our show and that is our news poem and our news poem today is titled deep learners blast the uncommon out of the sense wait oh yeah I know what that means. Blast the uncommon out of the sense with digital twins. That's what's coming up for the news poem. And I'll end this segment. I'm going to end this segment. I'm going to end this segment. Oh, edge region is still up there. I'm going to end you there. Oh, there we go. And let's just see. Are you up here on edge region? Edge region's not here. Okay, that's the last. There, I used all three segments of the show. Okay, I used them all at the end. Or, or, or all three all three scenes in this segment or excerpt. There you go. One more segment to go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 